Hello there guys, it's me and Stable Voltage. Welcome back to episode 3 of Humankind, where I'm basically playing through blind using the advanced tutorial in an attempt to learn how the game works, but also to try and judge whether or not the tutorial is any use. Uh, one thing that I do generally tend to find with these tutorials on strategy games is they are pretty poor and they often don't give the player the information they need to get going it hasn't been too bad there's definitely been a few things where i feel like i've been sort of scratching my head and just trying to guess at things but overall um most of it has made sense so we've got our third outpost down here now with it being an outpost yeah it takes several turns anyway i'm not sure if we can use the outpost to do anything else such as for example uh, spread out because we need to be able to get those horses ideally um, that you have used all of your movement though because that was the um, when you build an outpost it does use all of your movement so let's go and have a bit more exploration with uh, these warriors or with these um, we've got a few scouts in here so we'll we'll keep having a look around we'll see if there's anything else we can find on the map some urgent affairs require our attention empire foundation by what right do we rule First Civic Unlocked. The first Civic has been unlocked. Civics can be seen as the collection of customs, traditions and laws that allow you to personalise your empire by creating a unique society. The game context triggers emergency, the emergence of a Civic as each one of spe specific conditions for appearance. So new Civic. Founding myths or legitimacy? Or both of them, is it? Show details. By what right do we rule? Um, civic effects. When voting for a civic, you can choose either option, but each path might affect the empire in a number of areas. Diplomacy, religion, economy, military, etc. Civics can even lock, unlock new game mechanics. In addition to these effects, all civics affect the ideology of the empire, resulting in bonuses. Time to vote. You can vote for your first civic now, provided you have enough influence, otherwise come back later. So... Uh, we can pick natural right. We claim inherent domination over the land and beasts. We'd gain plus five influence on the main plaza, but that moves us closer towards progress and further away from tradition. Or we can choose divine mandate. Our supremacy is ordained, for we are the chosen ones, and that moves us more towards tradition and gives us more faith on our territory. Now, faith is ideally what we want to have in this game because it's... Uh, no, it's not faith, it's um, fame that... Uh, it hasn't really explained the use of faith at the moment, so... I think possibly... So we get more stability on all cities and more science on the city and outpost by moving towards progress. If we move towards tradition, uh, we still gain stability, but we gain faith. I think I'll take the research... So let's go for Why natural was this right. Even a question. Let's keep it simple. We've been here. It's our place. A first civic is available for you to vote on. Civics are made available based on the current game context and are voted for uh, or cancelled using the influence. Understood. So now we've op we've basically opened another one here, which is legitimacy. Um, what style of laws does our empire use? Customary laws. Historical precedent and traditions serve as the basis for judgment. Uh, so that will actually move us back towards... So 50% cheaper to create an outpost, but moves us back towards tradition. Or 20% cheaper to attach an outpost, and 20% cheaper to absorb a city. And that moves us even closer to progress. I think we go that yes, one for now. Once you discover writing, you can literally throw the book at them. So we could potentially absorb that neighbouring city. Well, uh, we could attach it. We would take a knock to our stability, but I think we'd be fine. So we attach those together, and I believe they now kind of work as one. Yeah, so this, this region simply becomes one region now. And does that count as a single city? Because somewhere, and I can't remember where I saw this, uh, there was a thing that said how many cities we have, because there is a limit to the number of cities you can control. Right, I'm totally missing where I spotted that before now. But yeah, you'll notice that this, this one here, we can detach it actually. 
I suppose in one sense, keeping them separate is better because you can... Um, if you've got two separate cities, you can build at both of them rather than just being able to build at one. This was only an outpost, though, not a city. Yeah, city cap is still one, but that wasn't a city. It was only an outpost. I think that's okay, though. Uh, yeah, you guys can't do anything on this turn, so let's move along. We are making some gold now, which is nice. Uh, let's continue to explore. i to trek through the forest here, which is a bit of a pain, because it uses a fair bit of movement. So we're going to use this army to do a bit of exploration. Uh, we'll probably do the same with this army, to be fair. There isn't really an awful lot going on up there. So two turns for that farmer's quarter to be completed. Four turns for our research to be completed. Now, is there anything up here that we particularly want? That's an unknown strategic resource. No point in going up that way. Yeah, I don't want to send all of my armies too far away. I don't know if there's even any um, other AIs on here for us to have to deal with, to be honest, because this is just the the tutorial level, or the, tut the tutorial game. I'm not too sure what we're going to encounter. Uh, here's something, and here's something. That is a forest. There's two unknown resources there. Let's move in here. Uh, curiosity collected, so that's given us some more research and some influence. Uh, that actually sped up our research rate there, which is quite nice. Ah, there's another... T okay, there's all good stuff happening now. Here's a new civic already, Blades of the Empire. As your horizons widen, your armies and that grow in lockstep with your ambitions. Now, with military power spread over several regiments, it's time to decide the na nature of the soldiers who compose your armies. Show me them details. Okay. Conscripts. Conscripted warriors will save us the cost of raising soldiers from the crib. Uh, we'll get a 30% reduction on the industry cost to create new soldiers. Or we can have professional soldiers. Forged from the youngest age, professional warriors will give us stronger armies. But we also have to consider what they move us towards. So this is going to be either authority or liberty. Authority gives us stability on all cities. Vision range on the districts and vision detection range on the districts. Whereas moving towards liberty will give us um, two, plus two influence on emblematic districts. I think just having the cheaper soldiers this here might be useful for us. And camaraderie. But it'll probably cause a lot of complaining. Just in case we need to spit units out in a hurry. I think probably having multiple cheap units will serve me better than having fewer better units. I don't know, maybe we'll find out. Uh, carpentry is now researched. The art of woodworking is essential for bow making the lays and lays the foundation for future construction. So now we can get archers. They do have an upkeep cost. So we have to pick a new tech now. Let's go to the tech tree. So I guess we want to go for defense. Being able to build garrisons could be useful. These onto things like bronze working. Uh, it's still relatively cheap. What does Calendar give us specifically? Calendar gives us Granary, actually. I think we'll go for Calendar first, because we are struggling with food in our city. Uh, we do have some growth coming. Can I move one out of there and still grow? Gain some extra science per turn would be nice. Now, what was I doing with you? Get rid of the research pop-up. I think we were just going to have a look around over in this direction. I know the other army's got some interesting stuff that it can go and look at, uh, wherever it is. Yep, so you've got this. So that's given us some free money, which is the best type of money, as everybody knows. I'm on it. And we found obsidian. Awesome. Uh, what have we got here? Oh yes, we need to build something new. So pottery workshop would give us more influence. Lumber yard would give us some more industry. I guess that's why we've suddenly got food, because we built that farmer's quarter. So yeah, we could get archers. We are making some money, but I think we want to concentrate right now on... Can we just build mo multiple pyramids? And exploit more resources? Build another pyramid on there. Okay, let's build another pyramid then. <laughs> that seems perfectly reasonable. 
Population gain. That's at our outpost. So that's down here. Attaching territories. This is the first time it's actually come up with the pop the pop up for this that I've noticed. A city can attach an outpost if they are adjacent by paying an amount of influence. The cost is based on the number of outposts already attached to the city. Note that attaching a territory will have an impact on your city's stability. Still doesn't tell me why I'd want to do it. Uh, territories and stability. Stability is reduced as cities get larger and by attaching territories. Okay. Still growing. Um, plus one population in six turns. I think I want to keep the science coming in there, so that's fine. Yeah, so let's keep exploring with you. What have we found here now? Marble. There's another curiosity. More money. I'd like research, ideally. So this is just a scout army. It's not going to do particularly well in any battles or anything. There's another curiosity there. Um... Old Horde providing 20 gold. Not great, to be fair. But we'll keep looking. Um, yep, you're out of movement. Let's end that turn. Still making 13 gold per turn. They have a certain appeal, the Olmecs. Be careful that your people don't start liking the neighbours more than you. Okay, looks like we've found somebody. The, uh, word of your empire has now reached the Olmecs. You have just met another empire. Will they become friend or foe? From now on, you can manage your relations with them through diplomacy. Simply select their di diplomatic icon in the upper left part of the screen to enter the diplomacy screen. Diplomacy is paramount to the development of your own empire, enabling you to strengthen ties and ensure mutual cooperation with friends and allies, or declare wars. Okay, so let's click on these guys. Enchanted. Do you too believe that there is no sacrifice too great for the needs of an empire? So these guys are in the ancient era as well. They don't have as much fame as we do. Uh, welcome to Humankind's Diplomacy screen. This is where you will manage all the diplomatic relations with foreign empires. As one of the gameplay systems which might seem complex at first, bear in mind that it takes everyone a few games to understand it and master its subtleties. Be the leader you want to be, find allies, trade resources, sign treaties, or declare wars. Let's take a quick tour of the Diplomacy Key Indicators uh, and Interaction tab. So we're at peace, diplomatic relation state. First things first, headline in the Diplomacy screen is your diplomatic relation state. Each empire has a relationship with every other empire in the game, and the relationship is defined to a great extent by the current relation state. Hover over your current diplomatic relation state to view what diplomatic abilities are available in that state and which are not. So both empires are at peace. Uh, attacks within the other's empire's borders are strictly forbidden. Skirmishes in neutral territory may not immediately lead to war. No new trade exchanges can be set up by either empire. Existing trade routes are unaffected. Armies are unable to enter territories attached to the other empire's cities. Exchange of ideas and beliefs between empires is limited. Both empires accept the other's ambassador, revealing the position of the capital city. Okay. War support. War support represents your population's animosity against a specific empire. It is the fuel for war. Your people's morale will be broken if you run out, and they will force you to agree to surrender. So more on war support and its role in surrender terms if and when you declare a war. Okay, cool. Relations tab. The Relations tab is the default tab when opening the Diplomacy screen. Here you can use diplomatic abilities such as a surprise war or propose an alliance. These abilities evolve following the diplomatic relation state. Also, you can view each empire's relations next to their avatars. So they are hesitant. They are unsure of your intentions and choose to reserve judgment for the time being. Trust is deteriorating. Our ideological proximity is high. We refuse to trade with them and our borders are close with them. Our strength is comparable. Here's the trade screen. The trade tab. If you know the position of a tile containing an exploited luxury or strategic resource, you can buy access to this resource if it belongs to an empire with which you can trade. We'll cover trade in more detail soon. Treaties or additional accords added on top of the state of peace or alliance, adding or removing one or more diplomatic abilities on both sides of the relation. By default, you start off on the left column of treaties and will progressively work your way to the right if you decide to deepen your ties with the empire you are dealing with. We will cover treaties in more details soon. So this is basically how we allow being able to uh, trade with each other to share our maps, open our borders and stuff like that. Can't use the crisis things at the moment. 
So it doesn't look like there's an awful lot of stuff going on here that I need to worry about right now. Um, we probably don't want to get an alliance. We don't have anything we can trade. There aren't really any treaties we can do. So I guess that's kind of the end of that. Okay, so let's get out of there. So where did we meet them is the question. Uh, you still have movement left. So does this mean we are close to their territory? Where did I bump into them? Um, my other... Oh, we bumped into them down there. That's where their army is. Okay. But I haven't specifically found their territory yet. There's a sanctuary down here. There's an animal we could go and kill. That might be worthwhile. Um, you do have some movement left. Oh, there's another animal. And if are these just deers, yeah, we might be... Can we get you on this turn? Or do you need movement in order to do that? You don't need movement. That's interesting. That's one thing that makes it different from something like Civilization, where you actually need movement to be able to uh, to do that. We, we're both on high ground here, so I think that's a good, good place to stay. This guy has got onto the high ground, which is a little bit of a pain. So I can't get you into a position to attack from high ground, not on the same turn, unfortunately. Uh, so no we, we'll, we'll end up having to attack from the low ground on this turn. Let's get up. But we should still be able to take it out quite easily. We're a lot stronger now than we used to be. Yeah, took himself out. So that's fine. Do we get anything specific from that? See, we don't actually get any additional units, which is one reason why you might want to stay longer in the Neolithic era, because that way you can actually grow your armies a little bit more by grabbing more food. That doesn't happen anymore. If I want to grow my armies, I've got to build more units at my cities. It's probably still worth killing those things. I'm sure we're gaining something from it. One more turn until our research is done. What have we got going on here? News from the borders. Will you accept this offer? So she has a proposal now to only trade luxuries. Well, Empires can only trade luxury resources team. between one another. I mean, I guess we can accept it. Not that we have any luxuries that we can trade. All parties. I accept. Let us raise a glass. But now trust is improving because we've signed a new treaty. So that is fine. Uh, we've got an idle army, which is this one. So we have taken some damage, but there were more animals in here. And there's definitely a tile that we want. Calendar research. So that actually gave us some uh, research and... Uh, well, some science and some influence. Uh, now that they are living in permanent settlements, villagers want to track the changes of the seasons and organise the planting of crops. So that specifically gave us granary, which is going to be useful. Leads on to writing... Gives us food market, house of scribes, and laws. Now, what do we want to go for now? Masonry. We do have some mountains near us. And fishing. We are quite near, near the coast. Let's go for city defense. So, three turns. It's got to be worth it. Uh, idle army. Is that you? No, not you. Ah, we found something interesting over here. Can't reach it on this turn, so keep exploring. So we're currently 30 turns in. We're playing on standard pace, which I think is limited to 300 turns, which is different to Civilization's um, 500 turns. So we've got to kind of go the long way around here. There's, there's no quick or easy way down because we're kind of on top of a mesa up here. Yeah, to get there, it looks like we've got to go the long way round. That's going to be an interesting one, but we'll keep trying to work our way over there if we can. Might be stuck. There's somebody else's borders. Not sure if those are the same guys that we've met down here. I think we can go in. Oh, we've got multiple uh, animals here. We're only going to attack one at a time. Oh, yeah, manual battle. Um... Let's keep both of you up on the high ground. Force them to come to me. I'm going to end the round and make him move in. 
does unfortunately give him a bit of a free attack, but... Can we get up there? Yes, we can. And you can get up there. You're going to attack first, weaken him up as much as possible. And we got him. Took a bit more damage there than I would have liked. Although, technically, we only um, lost 14% of our health. And we gained 5 gold. Hardly seems worth it, really. And uh, we have completed the production of the pyramids. Um, one more population in three turns. So we could definitely get a granary. Artisan's quarter would give us money for adjacent market quarters. We could get some archers. Not sure that we need them right now. Where can we get a granary? Is a granary not one that we choose a spot for? Is that just built in the city itself? Um, I wanted to read that, but it was kind of hidden. Definitely something like this one here. I mean, that's definitely an issue, right? Putting that there where I can't can't read it. Yeah, not not great for the pop-ups, really. Um, got a list here of all of our military forces. They're actually exhausted. Oh, it just means it spent all of its movement for this turn. Okay, that's fine. Let's end the turn, then. Create your religion. Pick the base of your people's beliefs. Polytheism. Faith per number of attached territories. Or shamanism. Faith per population. Well, we've only got... Now, is that population from... Is that population in total? Because we've got three in Memphis... How many attached territories am I going to have? Let's go for the attached territories one for now. We may attach more territories. We could go ahead and attach this one if we wanted to. We can technically have two cities. So we could go and... This is the strategic resources one. We know about this. We could go ahead and turn this one into a city. Let's go ahead and do that because we do actually want to have two cities. A holy site is available for construction. Holy sites are key to producing faith. Thereby gaining more followers for your religion, as well as unlocking religious tenants. Holy sites, just like cultural wonders, are shared projects that can be built by several cities at once, speeding up construction. Interesting. Don't necessarily want to do that right now. Uh, getting some growth here could be useful. Or we could go ahead and try and get a cheeky pyramid. Now, all of the tiles around here provide food, apart from this one that provides food and... Um, production if we go food and industry if i go ahead and put this here it will remove the food but i think we need the extra industry so let's go ahead and pop that on there and get that pyramid built so yeah you are very much uh, out of energy right now so we can go and ransack that sanctuary might take an extra turn, but it'll give us more gold than fighting those things. And... Yeah, still looks like it's going to be difficult to get... Yeah, he's now decided he can't get around that way. Off we go. So this is somebody else's territory. We certainly can't get in there. I'm not sure we're going to be able to get around here. Not this way anyway. Can we get in from this side? Doesn't particularly look like we can. We might have to bring him back. Yeah, I think we're going to end up end up bringing him back to at least like here or something, and see what happens. Let's end the turn. Ransack successful. We're successfully plundered, um, and our tech is done as well. Era star or not, one of your scientist stars has been earned. More on era stars. Era stars cover the seven gameplay affinities and have three objectives per era, each unlocking an era star when fulfilled. Once an era star is unlocked, a new objective unlocks for the related affinity and so on, allowing you to earn a maximum of 21 era stars per era. So we've unlocked this one here, which was researching four technologies. We get another one for doing seven. Okay, what have we got here? We've got an idle army, which is this one. 
So yes, you've done the ransacking. Ransack is successful. Do we want to continue to explore down here? Oh yes, definitely. Free money. Let's continue looking around, just to see what we might find. Here's somebody else's territory. That'll be these guys. So, is this also their territory up here as well? It's this. No, the border's a different colour. This is this is somebody else. I think we're going to go right over to their borders. That that's going to be tricky to reach. Uh, a melody for every occasion. Uh, in the teeming iconic city of Memphis, musicians are celebrated part of the local culture with a long history and holy rites. They bring nobility to religious rituals, jollity to palace celebrations, smiles to the sick and ailing, courage to marching armies, and distraction to the gods. Alas, they are still too small in number, especially the good ones, and now word of that their renown has reached across the empire. Lords, priests, commanders, among others, are grousing that their city deserves such artists too. How will we satisfy them? Muster. Street musicians riddle Memphis. They could help uh, commerce elsewhere, even if they distract learning. Um, so basically, plus five gold, but minus two science for ten turns. Or we can have them build. Every city will be required to build an institution of music where we can teach new performers. Plus ten production, or plus ten industry um, for ten turns. I've got a lot of money at the moment that I'm not using. I think that's probably worth doing. Just spend some money on production. Especially in these early stages where we're trying to build our cities up, so that makes sense. Uh, new technology. So we've unlocked like the first row of technology here. So where do we go from here? Irrigation could be useful. Food on rivers. Definitely got a few rivers near us. Public fountains could be useful as well for that stability. Not that I think that is needed specifically. Industry on copper. That is interesting. There is some copper reasonably near us. Now, why is that flashing? Is that flashing because it's... Oh, that's because that's my unique unit. So we could unlock that. It does require horses, which we don't have access to yet. So I think we just go for irrigation at this point. So that is fine. Um, yep, end the turn. Uh, what armies have we got here? Yes, you are going to keep moving this way, I suppose. They've got horses. Can I trade with them for those horses? A joy to see you, friend. Yeah, it's not saying that they have any. Well, it's a very weird place to have that cross to close that down. Um, Yeah, so all of these are linked together in one. I mean, I could still claim more territory, which is worth thinking about. This one up here, because that copper's in a different territory. Um, where is that unit? Is that not somebody else's land? Do I have to specifically meet their units? Sadar so converted to a new religion. The agrarian harabans. You're as likely to meet their canals and farmers as their soldiers. So we've met a new empire, which is good. Greetings, Sovereign. Do you too believe that there is no limit to how high humanity might soar? It's Edgar Allan Poe. Right, let's introduce ourselves. A thousand welcomes. I am the leader of a great people. I hope you are one who keeps their word. A pleasure to see you again. Even says his name's Edgar, but yeah, it's Edgar Allan Poe. Um, I don't think we need to do anything particularly there. Trust is deteriorating. He's got a lot of fame, not as much as me. He's two stars in, though. Well, good. Now we've met him, I can start moving you back the other way, and I think I might move over all the way back to... I do really want to try and grab that curiosity if I can. I've lost it now. Uh, we're going to bring you back to here. Um, mostly because I'm going to see if I can get up there and grab that, but then we're going to come back and build another outpost over here. And we've got an idle army here. Oh, here we go. Follow me. Let's nab these. Some more money. 
city stability is dropping a little bit. The stability of this city is the degree of control that you, as the ruler, exert over its population. If it gets too low, bad things will happen. Well, it's not terrible. Um, stability is reduced by cities getting larger and by building most districts. Stability changes over several turns. If a city receives stability bonus or malice, it will take a few turns to reach the final equilibrium value. This delay allows you to find solutions when a city suffers a penalty before it becomes a severe problem. So it's 90 trending towards 90. So at the moment, I think it's fine. So I think that's okay. I mean, we can build this obelisk of the gods, which is probably worth it. Because it would give us more stability and faith. We have to choose a spot for it. Let's go ahead and pop it up there. World deed unlocked. Wonderful Gunug Mulu by another empire though. Order your army to complete its movements. That's that one over there. Will you accept this I offer? Here yeah. That should Again, I don't think we've got anything we can trade yet. Oh, you've got die. Um, so we could get production and stability per die. Yeah, we could buy it. Trade. Firstly, you need enough money to buy resources. Note that the relationships treaties can restrict your ability to trade in luxury and strategic resources. Treaties might also influence their cost. Once a resource is purchased, a trade route is created and will grant you access to the resource. Be aware, though, as trade routes can be broken by changes in relationships or by being ransacked by other empires. To buy a resource, use the Buy button on the panel. Wow, land is expensive, but we can go by sea. And buy it for 48. Sure. You have created your first trade link. Commerce is how empires have always shared goods, resources, and tall tales. It'll help keep our relationships good, so it's well worth doing. He has a lot of those. I feel like the game has kind of screwed me over on the uh, luxury resources front, but we'll see how that pans out. Let's go and grab whatever that is. More money. That's given me a steam achievement there. How do I get these guys to heal up? Get them to clear forest. Oh, we can get them to regroup. Station at this position until the units in the army are healed. You cannot heal in this territory. I guess that means I've probably got to bring them home. Which is maybe not a bad idea. Okay, let's start bringing you back then. There's nothing really up there that I want to get. Um, oh. We can grab that one. I still want to go up there and try and grab that other one as well. Do I? I don't know what I want to do. A melody for every occasion too. Creating an institution dedicated to music in every city was an excellent idea. Performers produce refined, delicate compositions and many pay for the privilege to hear them play. Music is a serious, artful practice carried out by trained adepts. The strict classical musical culture is well established. Music is a sacred art, only to be performed by those with requisite learning. So that moves us... Uh, where does that go under? It's civics, isn't it? Ideologies. So that's actually moved us even further towards progress, which is not a bad thing. It's given us more science. Um, I think our stability's gone up a little bit because of that, has it? Yeah, 90 trending up towards 94. So, so stability is going to get a little better there. We're overproductive here. We've got four population, one in each of the slots, which I think is fine. At least for now it is. Uh, where's that unit? You want to move to that? See, whatever it is. Oh, there's another one here. There's a lair here. Maybe we should check that out as well. 
That's some more money. So where's that other army? You can't heal here. Oh, get that one. <laughs> more money. Uh, you've got one movement left. So we've kind of got to come down this way. And uh, you can build something now. We can actually have you work on this. Uh, what are we lacking here? Probably food. Build a district. And we want to head over towards this. But we do lose 10 stability from districts. But we want to get over there and grab that at some point. So let's end the turn. Just realise this video has gone on for a long time, so we'll be uh, ending this video very soon. So you're going to continue around up here, I think. This is the injured army that I'm trying to bring home, but I keep finding interesting things for them to grab on the way. Uh, this is the army that's going to move down here and ransack this lair, possibly. You've really used all your movement on this turn. Okay, on to the next turn we go then, I suppose. Attitude change. The Olmecs now feel differently about us. How do they feel about us? And you are here because... Kinship. They actually like us. Nothing that we can really trade with them. I could buy Ebony T. Why, well, they've got a lot of stuff already, haven't they? So the AI is already kicking my ass, which is pretty typical for these type of games. Right, that's the tile the lair is on. Let's move in. It's used all of our movement, but we can ransack. Attack! And then we can go and grab that one afterwards. You're going to move up and grab that. Would you look at that? More money. But yeah, we need to try and bring you home. Um, that takes you into our own territory, so we'll just move you that way. Uh, Thebes has finished the... Um, district. So we still can't get the horses... How do we get the horses? What's the collector we need for that? Shared projects, districts, infrastructures, units, and public ceremonies. Yeah, because you can't build on... You have to build next to an existing um, district or to a city centre. So if I want to be able to grab this, I need to build something here first. And every district I build is going to drop my um, stability. I mean, we could go ahead and build a garrison. It'll only take three turns, and the garrison will actually help with stability. We could lose one food, build a garrison, and then that puts us next to the horses. That's probably... The best way to go uh, but i'm going to end the turn there uh what's that option there land razor you have to select the city to be able to do this so remind me what this does oh that's right we can turn money and science into industry i don't think we need to worry about doing that just yet we're not we don't need to rush build anything um so i am going to uh, end the video here because i've gone on for way too long and then when we come back next time we will uh, continue on with this so i think we've done quite well uh, if i can remember what we've done in this video we've uh, met some other civilizations we have uh, picked some civics we've founded a religion we've learned how to trade we have joined some of our cities together we've learned how to build some uh, buildings and districts so certainly getting there uh, i'd like to thank you all for watching uh, if you are enjoying these videos please do consider uh, liking and subscribing it really helps the channel to grow i will see you on the next video and until then goodbye for now